by uh, SIM, uh, the company which had a lot share in this, uh, in developing this module. Um, we're going to have uh, uh, an introduction as well about uh, Microsoft and Office 365, and especially the Graph API, which is used in the integration. Um, also, uh, uh, Mario will take over then for the real uh, interesting part, and that's uh, what you can do with the module examples, uh, how you can set it up and some technical stuff, and of course, how you can join in on uh, uh, working on the module. So, I think that's uh, that's an interesting part. So, I will put myself into the screen. Um, I, I think we're going to go to the next slide, and I'm going to give the mic to, to uh, Akko. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Akko from Ettinger, I'm from SIM. Um, we uh, have a lot of customers in uh, local uh, government, like municipalities, and uh, I know the English word is waterstopper. It doesn't make sense. And we have a collaboration with Open Social uh, for our product, uh, Sim Open Social, which we use for uh, internet. Um, implementations. Um, we noticed uh, a need with our customers to uh, collaborate with their SharePoint onto uh, the Simon Social. So we started looking for uh, a partnership and we found this partnership with Finalist. Um, so we gave them the, uh, uh, the assignment to make this module uh, for our clients and then also share it with, uh, with the community. And, uh, well, should I give the mic to you or to uh, Fabian? Yes, you can. Thank you for some more introduction before the real uh, stuff happens. <laughs> because uh, 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 why integrating with Office 365? Well, uh, we think uh, Drupal is all about together. Um, um, it's a, it's, a, it's a community driven uh, technology framework and it's a real power of Drupal. Uh, but um, in our daily work, we also have a lot of tooling, uh, well, uh, which can handle a lot of uh, different situations which are interesting to uh, integrate with. So we really believe in the integration part of Drupal. Uh, so the, the real power of Drupal comes to life when you integrate with other stuff. So when you look at Drupal, Drupal is a framework that serves well as a social internet or community platform. Uh, Open Social, for instance, is really a community platform. And um, uh, we deliver a digital workspace as well for our customers, uh, which has a lot of uh, social functionality, uh, like liking and sharing, which you can find in an in a internet-like environment. Uh, and you can build it really well with Drupal. Um, together, combined with uh, a framework like, uh, uh, sorry, a uh, tool, uh, software like Office 365, it is possible to have uh, stuff like video conferencing, chat, and comments. Of course, you can try to have video conferencing in really inside Drupal, but it's 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 not easy. You know, you, you probably need a large uh, server environment to to have the the, the data uh, traffic uh, served well. Um, so we think that you can better look at uh, uh, combining two, the two, and that's what we did with a module. Um, I need to mention, uh, sorry, uh, I need to mention that's the blue line here. Um, Office 365 um, is is go-to software for like uh, education, uh, educational uh, uh, institutions, and also government. So uh, for our customers, it's important 
to look at Office 365. There's not a real choice. It's just it's it's there and, and it's used. So that was also a reason why we think uh, it is important to look at uh, at this uh, combination. Um, so we built a module. Uh, Fabio will tell more about it in a minute. Um, the module combines the advantages of both Drupal and Office 365. An important feature is, for instance, single sign-on. So we have um, uh, uh, a possibility in the module that you can log in with your account, which can be a Microsoft account, of course. And on behalf of that account, uh, Drupal can integrate with uh, the Graph API. And the Graph API is an API that is offered by Office 365. Um, Short how yeah the, sorry the, the 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 scheme you have there on the left bottom tells uh, a simplified version of the process. So we have users they log into uh, Azure Single Sign-On uh, and from that point the Office 365 module will um, take over uh, and integrate with the Graph API. So vice versa uh, communication uh, starts from there. On behalf of your account, which you have in uh, in, uh, in Microsoft. So uh, when we look at the Graph API, um, um, the Graph API of Microsoft is, is a really powerful API that, that has all the data that is stored in your subscription. So um, of course, when you have uh, chats, uh, Teams, or channels, or um, uh, you have documents or email. Um, the Graph API offers a solution to uh, to have it in another environment than Office 365 itself. So that's the real power. So we use Drupal as the social internet or digital workspace or, uh, or portal. But once logged in, you also have access to the data that is inside Office 365, which is really powerful because I don't have to use the tooling of uh, uh, Office 365 itself, but I can use Drupal as my main portal or framework uh, of choice. So that is where um, Fabian will uh, take over. He has lots of examples and especially use cases and uh, some technical stuff on how to do it uh, when using this module. Yes? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm going to show you some examples that we created in the module itself using sub-modules. Uh, in the main module. <coughs> um, these are basically examples you can use yourself and you can extend. Uh, I'm going to show you later on how to uh, uh, extend on the, the module itself and how to use the services provided by the module. First of all, I'm going to show you some examples we've built. Uh, Tom also uh, already mentioned it. Um, we have a single sign-on. So you can log in, uh, you, uh, in Drupal using your uh, Office account. Uh, it's connected via Azure. Um, and we also provide data synchronization. So if you want to synchronize your username from Office or your profile picture from Office, we synchronize, you can synchronize it to Drupal and um, uh, share your name. That means that it's um, easier for system administrators to change names, uh, profile pictures, just do it centrally in Azure, in the Active Directory there and it will automatically be synced to Drupal uh, when logging in. <coughs> Next up, we integrated with CK Editor. Um, we at Finlist, but also at Sim, um, found out that the, uh, our clients wanted to link documents in SharePoint, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, whatever you want, uh, within Drupal. And they always needed to look it up copy the link and paste it. It's not the easiest way. So we integrate with SharePoint. Um, you can view it as LinkedIn. And most of you know LinkedIn. Um, you select some text, search for uh, a search string. Um, it shows some documents. You can link documents to, um, uh, to SharePoint. Next up. Um, this is probably the least, uh, well, yeah, interesting, well, like not interesting, but the most basic uh, uh, functionality. Um, we added some application links, it's just a basic block. 
um, which is configurable by uh, an administrator, <coughs> and it links to the different uh, applications on the web. So it doesn't open your desktop app, uh, application, but it links to the web. Um, and it makes it a bit easier for um, our clients and for the users uh, to, to open, uh, for example, how it will work. Now we're going to go to some more extensive and more interesting features. I think, at least. Um, we made it possible for um, the group module to uh, connect to uh, channels within Teams. So we all use Teams, at least a thing list. Um, and we have channels, we have documents in those channels, we have chats within channels. Um, and we thought, well, in you know, social we use groups, in our digital workspace we use groups. Why not combine groups and teams, or groups and channels within teams? Um, that way we can show, as the um, uh, screenshot shows you, we can show some documents that are in the channel within teams. So you can just interact with it with the, the files. You can open the files directly from your uh, Drupal uh, installation. Um, you can see when or when they were uploaded, who did, who did it, um, all kinds of stuff. Um, in the future, there may be other integrations as well, but we don't know yet. Um, you're free to uh, to uh, develop your own. Um, but think, I think this is uh, one of the, the um, nice features. Um, we also integrate with Teams in a way that you can send messages from Drupal to Teams. Um, I'm going to show you a demo later on. You're going to see it that you can search for a user, type a message, and it will be sent from Drupal to their team, to their team's uh, chat, to a specific user. Um, the chat is also possible for groups, so we can open a group chat as well. We haven't implemented it, but we know it's possible. Um, so that's uh, uh, that's something we uh, we would like to build later on. <coughs> Another cool thing is the Outlook calendar. In our digital workspace, we show our calendar um, for the uh, in this case the, the upcoming five appointments. We show them in the in a, in a blocking Drupal. When you click the link, it opens it. Uh, it opens the, the event in Outlook. Um, there's already a direct link to the MS Teams meeting, so you can open the meeting in Teams um, automatically. Um, yeah, this is just a cool feature, we think. Um, another one that's um, connected to the Outlook calendar is that when you create events from within Drupal, it can automatically create a feature. Is the Mails. Um, we created two basic blocks uh, for now: uh, a block with unread mails and a block with just the latest recent mails. Um, this is just a basic feature uh, of what you can do with uh, with Outlook integration. Um, there are a lot of ideas we already have, uh, but haven't implemented yet. And there's more. Um, you can search for context, you can search for files on SharePoint. Um, so it's fully integrated. Um, when you open a file that you search for, it, it opens in SharePoint, it doesn't open in Drupal, because we don't want to rebuild Word or Excel or those apps. Um, it's a bit too much work. Um, but you know, it, you, you can search for them and um, uh, and open them in, uh, in uh, SharePoint. So you don't have to use the SharePoint interface at all, basically. <laughs> um, there's also a SharePoint field, uh, which does the same as the CK editor, except it's a field you can add to a content type. Uh, you can search for a file and have it linked to, uh, uh, to the file in SharePoint. And there's more, a lot of small things that we're not going to mention because of time. 
I'm gonna do a demo. I've tested this, so hopefully it works. It's always the same thing with a demo, right? Yeah, it always breaks. Well, not always, hopefully. Um, so we have the link, logo with Microsoft Office. In this browser, I'm already logged in in Office itself, so I'm not going to show you that I log in into Office itself, because I know, think you know, already know how that looks. Um, we click, log in with Microsoft Office. It locks us in. It shows my picture. That's in um, uh, that's my profile picture. I updated it in Teams, and it gets synced to Drupal. It has my name, my email address. Um, as you can see, we have the up, my upcoming appointments. Those are uh, all uh, kinds of uh, sessions and refinements and stuff. Um, you can see that there are people invited in the session. Uh, so in this case, it's uh, Tom next to me and Wouter who's in the, in the, the room. Um, you can join a Teams meeting. I'll show you that. When you click, it opens the calendar itself. It opens the, 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 um, the item. But we can also join the Teams meeting and it will open Teams. Same goes for the um, unread email. As you can see, I have four unread emails. I have some recent mails. When you click on an item, it opens the mail and it shows the mail. May I ask a question? A hey, question, yes. yes. Show like a preview of the mail body, so that's completely stripped of all the layout. And so, if it's an HTML mail, you just show it as plain text. As you do. Yeah, it's. Uh, so repeat the question. Then. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the question is, if uh, we show a, well, we show a preview of the email, and if it's stripped from the HTML and, and uh, stuff like that, right? Yeah. That's what what do we do that around? Yeah. No, we don't do it. Uh, we get uh, a sort of a description or a small. Preview text from the graphic, yeah. Oh, okay, it's done for you. Right? Yeah, okay. yeah. A lot, a, lot of, uh, a lot of it is done for you, exactly. To yeah. be more specific, yeah. And the whole, uh, I think, uh, an, uh, an important thing to notice here is uh, a question which is also a lot asked is uh, like, how, you, how do you handle the security? But so the, you, you don't find any documents in SharePoint that are not for you. Yeah. That's also a question we hear a lot. But also, that is something um, you're always. Everything is on behalf of your account. So if your account doesn't have the, the yeah, correct entrance, then it will not work. Yeah. I understand. So as you can see here, um, just another base, so, so just yeah, some basic examples. Um, some shared files that are shared with me. Um, and again, if you click. It opens Outlook, uh, no, SharePoint, the PowerPoint. <laughs> oh. a, lot, a lot of points and shares and, uh, no, it, it opens PowerPoint in this case. Um, so that's, uh, that's uh, fully integrated. Again, with the recent files. And here are the application links. And these are open Word Online where you can create new documents or open existing uh, documents. Some stuff that we um, created for SIM, amongst others, is that we show status messages for users that have been logged in via Office. As you can see, we have some users here. Um, some of them are logged in via, or, or have been logged in before via uh, Office. Um, some of them haven't, and those that have been logged in show the status indicator. So for me, you see that I'm uh, busy right now. I don't know with what, but I'm busy. Um, Christian, he is not available. 
Is what he else? in the room? He's here in the room. <laughs> yeah, Rose is offline, um, so you can see uh, um, their status. And when we hover, we have direct links with call or chat. So when I try to call, Wouter is going to ask if I want to, to, to start a call. This is something we can do uh, uh, anything about. It's just Teams itself that's, that, that's uh, asking this. Well, we're muted, so it doesn't work, but he's going to get a call. <laughs> he's picking up the phone right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is something that's not having a bit of a... Yeah, not here. Um, this is something we have built. It's not part of the module, but it's, it's a functionality you can uh, build yourself or let us build it. Just give you some pointers. Um, something that is part of the module is what I said, the message for your teams. Um, this is a real basic functionality right now. It's just to show that it's functionality that can be used, it can be created. Um, we can search again for Wouter. Let's give him the, the test message. Send. <laughs> I, I can show you as well here. It says test message. Ah. <laughs> here it says test message. <laughs> um, so it's uh, um, uh, yeah, it, it, it does some uh, some. Uh, um, uh, Why to sending some stuff back? Okay. Now you're going to stop sending because otherwise we get it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Ah, okay. It's a nice picture. Um, like I said, group integration. When we edit a group, then it takes some time because it's a demo. As always, Talked about it's not uh, when you redo it, it will go faster, right? Yeah. So the next time when I do the, the demo, it's yeah. Um, when you enable the, the O365 groups module, it adds a, a base field to a, a group entity where you can select uh, channels within Teams. So for now, I, I um, selected the Office 365 SIM Drupal Jam channel. When I save, we have a documents page in the group, and that shows the files that are in the channel. I can give you the proof that we have the files here. These are the same files that you see in Drupal. And again, when you open this, you see and it, it's the link to the document and when I change the document and I reload and you should see things cross the modified date change or not <laughs> wow it worked this morning It should work. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I can say that. Uh, um, I'm going to show you the um, uh, the, the Outlook calendar um, integration. So when we add an event in this system, we add a title: <coughs> test event. From today for to six, we can select save this event in my Outlook calendar, and we can invite, for instance, Tom. 
know that this is mandatory, I think. And we save. It's created. And it shows a message that the event has been created in my Outlook calendar. So when I open Outlook, we see that it's a test event from uh, 4 to 6 with the intro text I've added. So that's also get added to the email or to the, to the, um, to the event and a link back to Drupal. But when we open it, it opens the event. It creates the Teams link as well. Yeah. Yeah. It, it also uh, sets the flag that it's a Teams meeting, it's an online meeting. Um, it's something that it always does. Because it's, well, nowadays we work from home. Um, to show you, this is something that you can um, configure. So I'm go to our configuration page. We have calendar settings. And we can select the content type where we, which we want to use for the syncing of data. We can determine which or, or um, define which field is being used for the um, a subject of the um, uh, event in Outlook. We can determine which field is used for the body of the uh, uh, event, the start and end date. If it's a date range field, you can use both and it uses the start and the end date values of the field. And you can also add a location. It's also being synced to Outlook. Um, I think that was it for the demo. Or do you want to share anything else? Thanks, no, no, no. So I'm going to show you some uh, some examples of how to set up the module. Uh, and to show you that it's really simple. If you ever done an Open ID connection or used Open ID Connect or Open ID Windows Azure something module that we created as well, um, then you just, you know how simple it is. It's basically as simple as setting up an application on Azure. Um, we always need this Azure app to be able to um, connect because it defines the client ID, uh, client secret, tenant ID, and also the permissions uh, the, the uh, Drupal has on the Graph API. Maybe a good thing to add here is this is um, basically something the system administrator of a company can handle. Yeah. So uh, when you have a customer that uses uh, Office 365 and wants this integration in their intranet, for instance, then you have to be system administrator that should know a lot about uh, Azure. Uh, and Azure is, is the, the cloud alternative for which, which was on-premise Microsoft uh, uh, 10 years ago. Yeah. So we, that, that's also a use case for our module. We at this moment, I think Firebase only works with Azure, right? Yeah, it does. Yeah. When you set up the app, you want to specify with authorization scopes. You want to use which permissions, basically, the uh, Drupal has on uh, the app and on the Graph API. If it can read documents, or if it can write events in the calendar, or it can read emails, stuff like that. Um, to help you with that. Um, the module has, a, um, has implemented a hook, um, which is uh, used by all submodules, uh, where you can specify which scopes, as they are called, are, u are used in that module. Uh, for instance, for logging in, you have the user.read scope or the, uh, and the open ID and I think profile scope. Um, for Outlook, you have out the, the email.read scope. Um, in Drupal itself, we have a page with the authorization scopes that are implemented in uh, modules that are enabled. So it's really easy, just open that page on Drupal, click the, the, the checkboxes in the Azure app, corresponding checkboxes in the Azure app, save, and then you should have the right permissions. It's just a, a helpful tool to help you set up the, the Azure app. 
uh, because otherwise you have like two, three hundred different scopes and you don't know which one to enable. And when you've set it up, this is basically the only uh, configuration you need to do. You can skip the last two lines because it's in the config form, um, but the first three lines are the lines where you set up the tenant ID, the client ID, and the client secret. Those are used to connect to the Graph API, uh, and that are used to, um, uh, yeah, to, to use the correct uh, app in Azure. When do you put these lines? In your settings PHP. It's that easy. Just copy and paste into the, to the settings PHP, and that's it. Um, we chose not to uh, add these values in the uh, database for security reasons. You don't want a combination of tenant ID, client ID, client secret in your database. That's what we thought, at least. Then, uh, how to. Um, I'm going to show you um, how the well, how the module is built, not really, because I'm not going to show you every line of code. Um, but I'm going to show you how you can implement certain hooks, or how you can use uh, services that are implemented in the module, and how easy it is when you use the uh, Office 365 connector. Um, to get data from the Graph API in your own custom modules, and how you can extend the uh, connector. Like I said before, we have a hook implemented um, to add scopes. Our custom modules, or as our sub modules already implement this hook, uh, you can implement it as well. Um, it's just a hook, add the scopes to the array, and um, it will get added to the scopes value when logging a user in, um, so we know that the data or the, yeah, the data is accessible for those users. Um, this way you can add, yeah, a lot of more uh, uh, authorization scopes for, uh, for your custom applications. I'd recommend not to use it uh, over heavily because you don't want yeah, a lot of uh, authorization scopes added just for safety reasons. And then the real nice part, this is basically it if you want to get data about your own user. Um, I can tell you a lot of things about it, but what it basically does is it gets the graph service. You just say get graph data with an endpoint. Um, all these endpoints are uh, um, documented by Microsoft itself. So you can um, uh, just check the, doc the Microsoft documentation about the graph API. Just add the endpoint, and you have the data. It's this easy. Just three lines of code to show the display name, the the, the username of the uh, person logged in. And you have the same for posting data to the Graph API. This is an example of what we do to post um, an event to the calendar, to the Outlook calendar. Again, you use the Graph service. Um, you create an array with some data you want to add to the, um, uh, to the event, the subject, start and end date. Um, and you send graph, you use the send graph data method in the service, and that's it. Uh, we try to um, extract all kinds of, or yeah, to, to extract all kinds of functionality like logging in and authentication and stuff like that. So you don't have to worry about that. You just use the, 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 the get graph data and send graph data methods, and it should work. An important thing where you can download it. Please download it, test it, try it. Add issues to the issue queue if you find bugs, because that's important for us as well. Um, you can find it on Drupal.org, uh, the 0365 project. 
for search for Office, Office 365 connector. Uh, there's also a link to, I think, our Slack channel somewhere on the page. Uh, if you've got any questions, ask us either via the issue queue or via the Slack channel um, and try to answer them as good and as quick as possible. Um, also, if you would like to cooperate, uh, yeah, just ask. We're open for everything. I think that's it. Okay, maybe uh, there are some questions and I can set the microphone around and you can ask a question but it will be recorded. So it's are there any questions? Yes, I will, I will, I will uh, do it and I will give um, I was wondering, since this is using uh, integrating Microsoft software into Drupal, does Microsoft put any constraints? Let's say if you use this, you have to use our style guide, or are you no. no, it's fully free because we only use the graph API, um, and that's free to use. And uh, there are no constrictions about about, about using full UI, for instance. It's uh, 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 that's the, the UI they use. But now you can just free, free to use it. Um, that's it. As long as you pay for the uh, Office 365 subscriptions. Yes, I see two more questions. I'll go to you. Uh, hi, great work there. Uh, thanks for contributing that. Um, I have a question about the uh, account. So you need to be logged in as a user to be able to use it. It's not possible yeah. to have uh, the Drupal logged in and use another authentication system for the Drupal users? Okay. No, because every um, request we do to the Graph API is based on a user. Um, uh, because there, there's a lot of permissions and, and um, restrictions in what documents, for instance, you can uh, view or not. So every request we do to Graph API has to be because of a user. Um, it's a bit of a downside because you have to use the, the Azure uh, Active Directory. Uh, and you can't use SimpleSummer, for instance. Uh, well, SimpleSummer there's actually a workaround for. Uh, but um, it has to be part of the Azure uh, Active Directory. Yeah, thank you. That looked really great, uh, by the way. Um, I have a question about for uh, editors. Is it possible that if an editor um, sets up a draft page and, it, and you can write a hook to notify via Teams, except for example, other editors that something is ready for checkup? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's basically the same as sending an, an, a message to like it did to Wouter. Um, uh, it's 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 almost the same, except yeah. Multiple users, but it's something uh, that that's can, that can be done. Yeah. I think when developing this, you, you ran into some uh, some things that were not working with you. No, but that that, no, that, that were um, getting notif Teams notifications and showing them in Drupal. That's something we cannot do because Graph API doesn't uh, um, doesn't supplies with that information. Um, but posting data to Teams is possible. So as long as the Graph API is has having functionality. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the Graph API has a lot of functionality that that, that we don't use yet. So it's, uh, uh, yeah, there's a lot of possibilities there. Thank you. Any more questions? Hello. Um, I have a question about use cases. So uh, in our office, we uh, also use Office, of course, and I guess we could build some kind of cool dashboard just as you did. Um, but for customers, do you have any like, examples on what the strength of this could be, apart from just being a dashboard? Uh, well, it's basically uh, uh, some stuff that I already showed you, like the status, uh, like you, you know when, when colleagues are in the office or not. Um, but for our customers, we actually most of the time implement the, the basics uh, that, that we use right now. Uh, so we, we use it as a dashboard feature. Uh, and, but that's just our customers because that's what they request. And that's what, yeah. Yeah, to, to add something there, uh, what we are looking at at the moment also is having uh, a solution for uh, a real enterprise search uh, solution. So 
the, the thing is, uh, we're not only integrating with Office. There is more, uh, for, for instance, when working for a university, there are like 30 applications uh, you can integrate with. And Office is just, just one of them. So it's nice to, to search for SharePoint documents, and it's a nice feature to show. It's a standard feature. But the power really comes into sight when you can search content that is around all these applications and integrate them with, with Office. And it's just not, um, it's not a dashboard with Office things anymore, but it's a real integrated solution that's really a portal and that combines all the uh, uh, applications that can be in an organization. Just a follow-up, uh, I haven't looked at the Azure Storms yet, as you can but that would mean basically it would be possible to like get information about your own virtual machines on Azure? Sorry, I guess. And uh, information on running virtual machines you have or any uh, other services you might have inside Azure? As long as it's available in Graph API, then you can uh, get those data. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I know that Graph API does uh, um, uh, expose some data that is, uh, that is um, accessible via the Azure uh, interface as well. Um, so they, I think that, that it's, it's possible to get that, that data. Yeah. Okay, so that was the last question. And feel free to uh, ask Frank any more questions yeah. about it. Maybe he can show you something and we're around all day. Yeah. So, uh, and otherwise, uh, use Slack. I'm Alan and Slack. Always.